just by the 12th fret there. But then you go back to the minor again. Yeah. Is that something that you're conscious of in any way, or just something that's... Well, you have, you have to be sort of conscious of it in certain ways, in as much as there's only so many to play in minor. Right. But if, if, it's, if, if the song's in major, I, you don't, I don't think of it as in minor if I'm playing those types. Okay, yeah. I think of it as a neuter run. Right. Uh, because generally during a run, it's the last note or one of the middle ones that will make it either major or minor. Right. So really, it's either the last run. It's probably it's usually the last note at the end of the run that is, okay. that states what that run was. Right. Yeah. The run doesn't have to be totally in major. Mm. It can be. You can go in and out. Yeah. And it, but again, it's basically down to how it feels in there. Right. Could you possibly play a couple of licks incorporating the? Uh, the minor and major, similar to what you were doing in the uh, the opening part of the uh, video. Right. Well, if we play something, say A major. A I? major. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you that there? Yeah, anything you like, I'll play along. <laughs> That was really nice. So I noticed that we were going from the, uh, the C there yeah. to the C sharp, and also, also noticed that we were using the F sharp quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, as we get back to the root, right. which, is, which is the A. So you're going from major to minor. And it always comes back to. So you state what key is in by the last note you hit. Right. Uh, if you play a, a lick saying towards the end of the solo in minor. Right. Uh, Yeah. So, so see, as you, between you can basically float where you like. So as you're as you're playing a the chord, you might start off in minor. Yeah. But just putting in that C sharp just to let the listener know that it's you know playing over a major. That's basically it. About chord progression. Um, you don't you stay around that if it's an A minor, you stay around that area right. of the A minor runs. Mm. And you can move to you can move key when it goes to the D or the mm. or the E. But when you do that you've got to sort of go major as in so it goes So basically what you're saying is is when you play, if we're talking in the key of A here, yeah. when you're playing over the, the E7 chord and the, the B7 chord, you tend to keep that minor. You can, so as, a, as a rule, you can keep it, you can play that because as I say, if you don't look at them as actually minor notes, and you're still thinking in the major key, mm. you can use them as what I call neuter notes. Right. Because it, it depends on the next note you play, mm, or how you bend it. Yeah. But you can still hit it, and you can still use it. Okay. So if I just play uh, a stagnant A7 chord, could you just maybe play a couple of uh, little blues runs, just from the top of the guitar to the bottom for me, Certainly. just to demonstrate that?
just like to talk about uh, the guitar for a second. I understand there's a bit of history in this particular guitar. Could you oh my God, yes. <laughs> Probably uh, too much to uh, talk about in this video completely, but if you could maybe give us a, a brief insight into the guitar and... Well, basically it was uh, given to me when I joined Dan Lizzy. Right. Um, I think the year, I'm not actually quite sure of the year to be honest. Uh, it did have um, the small humbuckers on it. Right. Um, and I used that for quite some time as it stood. Uh, but we were on tour in America and the neck went and it needed a refretting. So I then had to go and find another guitar because we were on tour. Yeah. I didn't have a spare at the time. <laughs> so uh, I bought a black Les Paul Custom. Right. This was put into Valdez in Los Angeles. Right. Uh, I went off down to Texas, I bought the Les Paul Custom and about three or four other guitars from a vintage shop. Mm. And when I asked the guy for a discount, he gave me these pickups. Oh, right. They were 59 PEFs. So the minute I got them, I took and I got the guitar back. I gave the pickups to the roadie and said, "Put them on." Right. We were in the hotel, and he got yeah. the, he got the toolkit out and it's the iron. He's even got the wrong <laughs> screws on yeah. it, and the, the things are bent and the wood's yeah. all cut. Um, but the sound is deadly. Mm. Yeah, so basically, I used the black one for quite a while, but um, I've been back with this one since since the end of Wild Horses. Mm. Uh, so, was there any particular songs that? Uh, that particular guitar that you know was used on that you could. Uh, well, it was used on all the, the early Lizzy stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because I know a lot Nobody of people. Nobody particular pickups, but right. uh, the original ones, uh, and it was used. I think they used it on. Oh, the neck broke off and joined the fork. That was right. <laughs> uh, and I think it had these pickups on it then. Right. So it was used on Joy and the Fox album. Yeah. And was it as early as the Fighting album? No. Oh, the guitar was, but not the pickups.